In this lecture, I want to clarify three points. First of all, why the return on equity may not work. Second of all, how can we use an alternative method to the return on equity? And third, how we can actually look at the return on equity, but from different perspectives. As for the first point, why does the return on equity may not work? Well, when we look at the return on equity, we know that this is a profitability measure that is going to tell us what's the return for the shareholders. And this is given by the net income over the equity. But how do we actually know whether the return on equity is healthy or not for our organization? In other words, if you look at this number by itself, it's not going to tell you not much about the company. Let me show you why. But before we do those exercises and before I show you how the DuPont analysis work, let me clarify one point here. I'm not a dealer. I'm not a broker. I'm here to teach you. And therefore, everything that we are going to see throughout this lecture is not an advice, is not an, an investment advice. Therefore, everything that you're going to see is just for your education. I just want to show you how the DuPont analysis works. Therefore, don't take the information here for more than educational purposes. Having said that, let's compute our return on equity. At the bottom of our spreadsheet, we actually have the financial information for Apple, which is the company that invented the iPod, the iPad, and so on and so forth. We have the financial information for September 2015 and September 2014. And all the information is here in this part of the spreadsheet, and we are going to use it to compute and to do our exercises here. Now, as for the first thing that we want to do, we want to compute our return on equity, and therefore we go on and we take our net income. And then, of course, we want to take our equity. Here you go. As you can see, our return on equity here is actually 45%. It's a very high return on equity, and we may conclude that the company is very profitable, that the return for its shareholders is very high, and so on and so forth. But how do we know if the return on equity, in this case, is healthy for the business? Well, to do so, we have to look at another method, which is called DuPont analysis. The reason why this is called DuPont analysis is because for the first time was used by DuPont Corporation at the beginning of the 20th century. And now, let me show you how this DuPont analysis works. Now, the DuPont analysis starts from the assumption that we can deconstruct the return on equity. We can say that the return on equity is given by three basic formulas. So the net income over sales times the sales over assets times the assets over equity. At the end of this lecture, you will get the concept. For now, just follow me and don't worry. If you're familiar with simple math concepts, you should know that an equation is actually a mathematical statement which tells you that two values are equal. In other words, what we are seeing here is that our three formulas here are actually equal to this number here. But how is this possible? Well, let me show you. If you're familiar with the fractions, a fraction is a number which has a numerator and a denominator, you know that when we multiply one fraction to the other and when the denominator of one fraction is actually equal to the numerator of the other fraction, those numbers will actually cancel out. And that's what is happening here. When we have these formulas here, as you can see, our sales will actually cancel out with the sales of the second fraction and the assets of the second fraction will cancel out with the assets of the third fraction. And as you can see, eventually we go back to our return on equity, which is given by the net income over the equity. So here we are seeing that if we do this computation here, so if we multiply those three formulas together, we're going to get the same result here. Therefore, we're going to get back our return on equity. Now, what does it mean? Well, this means that actually the return on equity is influenced by three main factors. Uh, this formula allows us to see the operational efficiency of the company. The second formula that we see is the sales over assets, which is the asset turnover, which tells us whether the company is using its assets in an efficient way. In other words, it's saying how much sales the company is able to generate with each dollars of assets that it has at its disposal. And then, of course, you have the third factor, which is the financial leverage, which is given by the assets over equity. Therefore, here we are seeing, OK, we have a higher return on equity. But why is this happening? Is the return on equity increasing due to the profit margin, the asset turnover or the financial leverage? So let's go on and let's investigate further. Now, 
Let's compute our DuPont formula here. The first thing that we want to do is actually to compute our profit margin, which is given by the net income over the sales. Therefore, we go on and we take our net income here, and then we take our sales as well. Then another thing that we want to do is we want to compute our asset turnover formula, which is given by the sales over the, the assets, and we have the assets here as well. And then the third formula, which is going to be our financial leverage, which is given by the assets that again we are going to find on our balance sheet and then the equity that we are going to find on our balance sheet as well. Now, assets and equity, remember, we find them on the balance sheet. Sales, we find the sales on the income statement and the assets on the balance sheet. And we find the net income on the income statement and the sales on the income statement as well. So for this ratio, you're going to need the income statement. For this one, you're going to need the income statement and the balance sheet. And for the third one, you're going to need the balance sheet. Having said that, as you can see, by computing our DuPont formula, our DuPont analysis, we have a profit margin of almost 23%, an asset turnover of 80% over, and a leverage of 243%. As you can see, our return on equity is still 45%, which is what we had at the beginning here, 45%. And this number, we actually had it by multiplying those three numbers here, the profit margin, the asset turnover, and the average. So this is a test. This is a test to see whether we are getting back the same number, the same return on equity. Now, what we are seeing with this formula is that although we increased the return on equity, why this actually happened? Well, we know now that the return on equity actually increased for three main factors. First of all, the company used leverage because here when you see the financial leverage, also called equity multiplier, which is 240%, it means that the company financed more than half of its assets through debt, through leverage. Therefore, one reason why our return on equity increased was due to the leverage Therefore, the company used the debt to increase its return on equity. On the other hand, also the asset turnover is very high, is 80%. It means that for each dollar of asset that we have into the company, we are producing 80 cents in sales, and that's a good result. And then, of course, we are seeing that the profit margin is almost 23%. Almost one quarter of the company sales are actually comprised of net income, and this is a great result as well. Now, what it means here is that our return on equity, of course, is healthy in this case, but it is also true that we have to be careful because Apple, in this case, used the leverage to increase its return on equity. And although the asset turnover and the profitability margin are very, are very high as well, therefore this is a good sign, it is also true that the return on equity increased due to leverage as well. Now, the thing is that when you look at your return on equity, you want to make sure that this ratio is actually increasing due to the profit margin and the asset turnover because when this is happening it is very good for the company it is beneficial for the company but when the return on equity is mainly increasing due to the leverage then this is not good for the company and therefore you want to be careful when you see a company which is increasing its return on equity mainly due to its leverage rather than the asset turnover and the profit margin so this is the way the dupont analysis works and this is another tool that you can use as actually financial analyst or credit analyst to assess the profitability of a company, but also how much the company is returning to its shareholders.